Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So in this quick video, uh, actually I observe one pattern with most of the candidates, the training, and then when I talk to people uh, and then asking the questions and everything. So I observe one pattern that they are not sure about. They are not able to recognize whenever they are going to a new project or any new application, they try to automate for the web automation point of view or the UI automation point of view that it's a really React-based application or Angular-based application, which uh, how will I get to know that this, what exactly the web technology or JavaScript framework that they have used to develop that uh, UI or develop that particular uh, web page or an application or web application. So it's a very important if you are working with the UI automation using Selenium, Playwright, Cypress, or any other XYZ tool, you should first of all know that which tool, which technology, and what kind of elements that they have designed. Maybe it could be SVG element, it could be shadow DOM element, it could be some iframe or cross origin iframes are there or any normal elements are there or IDs are available or not. Dynamic IDs are coming or not. Is it uh, how to inspect the uh, specific element? We know that, okay, we have to open the Chrome Dev Tools, inspect the element, but what are the different things that we have to observe? So that's very important before jumping into automation before writing the code in automation with tool or anything, whatever you are writing with Selenium or Playwright, it's very important to know that how exactly we can uh, identify the different elements and the components which are built on this particular application. So this will give you a lot of confidence that I know that if it is a shadow DOM based, I have to design, my design approach will be different or what kind of UI locator strategies that I have to use and everything. So there are a couple of tools that I'll tell you that which will help you a lot to recognize or to identify that which technology uh, is being used or what are the different tools and the libraries are being used to develop that web application. And we will see that some important tips on uh, how to identify or how to inspect the element, that spatial element or any specific locator, if you are uh, looking for that, we can check that as well. So I'm not going with the typical Chrome Dev tools and inspect it. I'll give you a couple of uh, important and amazing tools which are there. We will go through that. So for example, let's see if I ask you that you have to go through with the flipkart.com and I really want to know that this is a flipkart. And then if I search something on here, let's say I'm searching for the MacBook and then suggestions are coming. If I'm doing the login or maybe my profile or something like this, then in that case, um, how exactly, you know, this page is completely built up and which either it is Angular based application or React based application. So I'll give you one suggestion just and uh, download this particular plugin WF. Analyzer Chrome. I don't know how to pronounce this, but W app or web analyzer actually, it's N is missing, but you can just simply go to this, search it on Google, and then add it, it to your Chrome. So see, I'm already having it. Its rating is amazingly good, 4.6, and it's actually featured by a Chrome web store. Go to your application or any application that you really want to automate or try to inspect, and then you simply click on this. When you click on this here, and you will see that different technologies used here. So it says that on Flipkart, Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, for JavaScript framework, it's a React-based application. So yes, guys, Flipkart is actually a React-based application. Same thing, see, I'll open that. This is the flipkart.com homepage, and it's a React-based application. And uh, reverse proxy point of view, they are using ng-inx, and there are a lot of other information also available here. So we are not bothered about everything. We are bothered about that. Okay, fine. Now I got to know React. They are using it here that in that case, now I have to check that which one is the right automation tool or best automation tool to handle the React based application or React based components or the elements. Same thing. If you let's see, go for the Amazon, then uh, you can just again, click on it. It will automatically, or you can just simple refresh this page. When you refresh it also, this will internally analyze and uh, give you the technologies. See if it's not coming in the first time, again, you click on it and then it's saying that, okay, yeah, the programming language, they are using Java and uh, Amazon is completely based on core JS and the jQuery, uh, I mean, very frequently and heavily they are using jQuery also there. You must have seen uh, my application also, this one, open card application. And if you see the technology behind that, the technology behind that, uh, see WordPress for the content management, and e-commerce open card license that I'm using it, plus uh, blogs for WordPress, but I'm not bothered about blog and everything. Let's see the JavaScript framework. So a couple of important things, Backbone.js and Marinate and the majorly heavily 
uh, React is being used here to develop the open card application, right? And uh, other JavaScript libraries also mentioned here, like lazy sizes, jQuery, UI, core, JS, and everything here. But majorly, it's a jQuery and the React based application, right? So you can just quickly download this plugin and then inspect what exactly they are using. For example, let's see what database I'm using for this application. See, for the security, I'm using reCAPTCHA, font descripts are there, other miscellaneous uh, technologies that I'm using it, and the UI framework, Bootstrap. See, it's completely written in PHP. And here you can see the database is MySQL. So the internal, uh, you know, the backend and everything is written with the PHP with the databases, MySQL database. Actually, I'm using it here. So yes, this tool is actually uh, identifying that uh, which technology being used for this application, right? So that is the first thing. Second thing is that you all have to be comfortable with the right click on it, go to inspect, and then just go to elements. Make sure that, okay, you are checking all the elements properly. If I really looking for that, okay, fine, let's go to the registration page. And then I really want to check that how exactly this application or this particular web page is built. So what kind of, uh, you know, different locators or different uh, HTML tags and the, uh, I would say the different properties and the attributes for the HTML that they are using. So I first important thing, I'm lo really looking for that the ID or name or some unique locators or data ID or data test ID, have they really mentioned or not? If it is not, then I know that uh, if it is not mentioned that maybe I can ask for the developers that please uh, add the ID or so that I can use that ID or data test ID or test data ID, I can use it here. If any, no other unique identifiers or attributes are there, then it will be difficult for me. Then I have to go with the CSS or XPath or some other uh, locator strategies that I have to use, but it's always good that you are checking that this is available or not. Maybe this input is there inside the iframe or shadow DOM and all those things. You should be able to recognize that. So be comfortable with the HTML DOM also. I don't want to go complete, the, you know, how to inspect and all those things. Maybe you are already aware of it because this is very standard thing when we learn and start with the UI automation. That is the first thing that we always do, right click and then inspect a specific element and then check the ID name, class and everything is there or not. Okay, so now if you, let's see, not comfortable with this and not getting much information from here, you can always uh, use Selectors Hub application also, Selectors Hub plugin also. What you just need to do, you just need to download Selectors Hub and uh, see it's already there in my system also. And then 4.9, more than 200K users are already there. And it's again featured by Chrome Web Store. So once you do it, and then it will be actually visible here, you can see Selectors Hub. You can go with the paid version also, but if you really want to go with the free version, you can go with the free version as well. So I'm not doing any, uh, you know, specific like advertisement for the, or advertising for the selectors sir, but I really found a couple of important things here. I'll show you. For example, let's see if you go to this particular vehicle registration form and uh, this actually entire form, when you click on it, it's actually available inside the iframe. Okay, this entire frame is the iframe. So before writing the code and before inspecting, what I can do, I can just simply open Control Shift S or Command Shift S to open the selectors hub. So see selectors are actually getting opened here. And what I'll do, I'll just simply select the selector hub from here and uh, just simple inspect this. See proposal title. Can you see this element is, you just see the tooltip here. See this one. This element is inside the iframe. So actually this uh, selector sub is able to recognize the elements within the iframe before writing the code. So here you can see that yes, before, and I'm not going through any HTML DOM or anything. So it's clearly visible that this element is inside the iframe. So for all the spatial elements that you are looking for, it will always give you element inside the iframe or SVG or shadow DOM or anything. So for example, let's see if I go to the flip card. On flip card, this is a, a SVG element, see? is giving me that. Can you see the pink color tooltip is coming? This is SVG element. Uh, whatever the SVG element is available, you can just simply ex uh, inspect that and it's giving me the SVG element here, right? Okay. Now, can I inspect some, let's see, other SVG, let's see that. So let's go to this and uh, here, this entire, uh, you know, map, the United States map, this is a, you know, uh, US map. And if I try to inspect, see it's saying this is SVG element. Everything is SVG. So each and every state is built uh, out of SVG element, right? So can you see the pink color 
this uh, pink color uh, a tool tip it's giving me that but this is svg element so i know that okay now i have to create the x path or a special x path for the svg element i cannot use a uh, normal x path over here right okay now let's uh, talk about something let's see this one so i really want to know that okay what exactly this element is all about so i can just simply inspect it again and this is actually available inside the shadow dom so this is already giving me in the tooltip that this element is inside the shadow DOM. This element is again SVG element. This element is inside the shadow DOM. See the blue color tooltip here also blue color tool tooltip. And this is this is SVG element. This uh, you know the voice icon which is there. This is also inside the shadow DOM. So I got to know that okay yeah this application is actually having a lot of uh, shadow DOMs there on the page. Right. So like this, you can just simple uh, go through it and then, uh, uh, you know, you will get to know that what exactly the page design, what are different HTML uh, elements that they are using. But let's see for this guy, it's not giving me anything because this is not SVG. This is not inside the shadow DOM or any iframe or nothing. So it's just a normal element, just inspect it. And then you will get to know the X path, which is written over here. You can just copy the X path and use it in your script directly. Right. So like this, you can easily uh, do that here. Perfect. Now, the good thing is always make it a habit. If you don't want to use selectors hub also. Now, let's see that this element is really inside the iframe or not. So always before writing the code, before jumping into the, you know, the programming or the designing the framework or writing the code, always spend some time on the new application that what kind of technology or what kind of uh, HTML DOM structure exactly it is a design. So let's see. I'm again. I'm inspecting this guy, which is written with input type equal to text. Name is there. Class is there, or maybe some other properties also there. So I just scroll it up, make it a habit of checking quickly that yeah, it's there inside the iframe. So iframe is having its own DOM hash document means inside the iframe it's having entire DOM, and then the this iframe DOM is having these number of elements inside the body section. Right. So this is the page DOM, which is starting from here. And this is the body body of the page. And inside the body, we have uh, one iframe and inside the iframe, another document, one more body. And then this entire form, which is available here like that. Right. So this is always giving you the confidence that yes, that uh, this is my react application or angular JS application or what kind of application it is. And then on the basis of that, uh, you know, I'm inspecting the element and checking that uh, what exactly the spatial element is designed like SVG, Shadow DOM and all those things. And uh, for Freshworks, see the technology is still maybe getting loaded or uh, it will be displayed in some time. It's saying around three. This plugin will always give you the right, I mean, the information correctly, but maybe see the technology part is missing here. So this is not giving all that it's giving six over here. Maybe it's it will be loaded in some time, but that's okay that you can check it uh, later as well. And one more thing, guys, any tool that you're using, either it is Selenium with Java, Python, JavaScript, or whatever, or Playwright with Java, JavaScript, Python, or .NET, or Cypress, or any other JavaScript-based framework also that you're using it, all these tools are capable enough of automating any kind of web application. Either it is Angular, React, or any kind of technology that they are using it. It's just a matter of how exactly you're creating the locators, the locator strategies, proper weight mechanism, proper uh, synchronization between your script and the application that you are implementing it and the locators that you are writing, that matters a lot. So please improve your locator strategy concept that if normal ID or direct unique locators are not available, let's see, for example, a very complex web table, which is totally dynamic in nature and you have to deal with a lot of rows and columns. So it is not possible for the developer that they have to provide the ID for each and every column and each and every cell value. So in that case, you should know that how to traverse the table left side and right side, below side, top side with the help of XPath or sibling concept, something like this in XPath, we can use it or locator strategy. We can define it properly uh, with these kind of components. So locator strategy plays a very important role in the UI automation. What we do that we just learn Selenium or Playwright or any specific tool but we are not improving the concept of CSS, the concept of XPath, how to deal with the DOM, what kind of JavaScript executor we can use it for the pseudo element and all those things. That plays a very important role here. 
I'll do one thing. I'll prepare one more video on pseudo elements and the pseudo classes. Very short video, maybe five or 10 minutes. Next time, that will give you the clarity. You must have seen something like colon, colon before a colon, colon after or like that. So that will also give you the confidence that, okay, how to handle these kind of elements, right? So it's a myth that selenium cannot do uh, not compatible with the angular or react or something like this. It's totally myth. And then only playwright can do that or only this tool can do that. No, it's not like that. Any tool, any web automation tool can handle these kind of application built upon angular react or view or anything. It's all about how exactly you're preparing your locator strategy plus the weight mechanism that you are implementing it. I hope this is clear. So that's all for this video. I'll just uh, give the, okay, I think it's loaded now. See now for the freshworks.com it's loaded and the JavaScript framework that they are using React for that. I think the, most of the companies they move to the React instead of Angular. So yeah, just, uh, I'll do one thing. I'll just give you the link of this uh, plugin and the selectors of plugin in the description and the first comment of this video, just download it and play with that and then get the confidence for your application. Thank you so much guys.